called the answer, but she wasn't feeling well. Oh, no. But I'm on, on Janu in January. Anyway. She's keeping it real simple. She is the... She is the... Yes.
Um, we're fine. No. Are you sure? Positive. Positive, positive. Because you're out of sync. I know. Uh, I'm going to check back here.
Good morning. Good Welcome. Morning. I'm so happy to see you all today. Uh, I had a feeling it would be just a handful of us today. Unlike Christmas Eve, um, when everybody wants to be here, New Year's Day, I think uh, we, had, we even had no traffic on the way. For, Cedar Crest was a breeze. We had every stop, we didn't even have to stop at a stoplight. It was amazing. Uh, so I think that we knew that it was gonna be the, a few faithful of us and welcome, we're glad to have you. Welcome to those of you who are out in the parking lot. And wait, somebody, who, oh, Maggie's looking for Jeff. He's down here, Maggie. And, uh, welcome to those of you who are out in the parking lot. L they're there. Hi, parking lot people. I guess they don't want to honk today. That's all right. We still love you. And welcome to those of you who are joining us now on Facebook Live. And to those of you who will be joining us later on YouTube, welcome. We're so glad that you're here. Today is the day that we celebrate Epiphany. Usually we have lessons and carols on this Sunday, but because of the way the calendar fell, next week is Baptism of Jesus, and we're baptizing a baby um, And next week, and so I'm very excited uh, for that. We also have, um, this is a super busy week here, uh, we have two meetings that I'm aware of. Worship and Music is uh, January 3rd at 7, and Joint Staff is at 6.30 on Wednesday, uh, the 4th. Also on Wednesday, um, there will be a, a graveside service for Geraldine Bauer, and uh, there will be a, on, on Friday afternoon, there will be a service uh, also graveside for Ed Bauman. Uh, Geraldine was a member of the UCC and Ed was a member of the Lutheran congregation. Um, <clears throat> also on Friday morning, uh, um, there will be a service of a memorial service for the Reverend Dr. Alan Miller, uh, who passed away a few weeks ago. His uh, family has had a private service um, in uh, North Carolina where they lived, but they wanted to have a memorial here. Um, John Dorhauer, who's the president of the UCC, will be coming, I'll be attending, and then leaving to do the Ed Bauman's uh, funeral uh, uh, later on in that afternoon. But um, I know many of you knew Alan and loved him, and so I just wanted you to be in prayer for all of the, he left a lot of grieving people behind because he was deeply, deeply loved here. Um, and uh, I also have a funeral, I'm, I'm officiating to and I'm attending to. Um, my former secretary at Siegel's Church passed away on the 23rd, and so I'll be attending her funeral next Saturday. Um, so it's kind of a jam-packed week, but um, please, if you're a part of music and worship, come to that meeting and let us, uh, because we're going to be in, we're gonna just look at some interesting things, I think, and we want you here. Also, today is Star Word Day. I know you've noticed the stars. They're on the windowsills. There's a basket full of them. I have to thank Ronnie. She did such a wonderful job, and I think Tony might have helped. Did you help too, pal? Yeah. Just, yeah. <laughs> uh, they cut them out, so they are perfectly cut out this year, and she decorated them. And so um, I'm so grateful for that. It's, it's such a blessing to have that. But you will find uh, you will find them on the windowsills. You'll find them on the piano up here. 
and a whole basket full of them up in, the, in this area. Um, each star has been prayed over by at least three people, four people, and uh, <clears throat> so as they were being made, they were prayed over as Jenny was printing them, she prayed over them, and I've been printing, praying over them since they came back to the office, that they might bless you and that it might be a word that you think God would like you to focus on for this year. Um, so, uh, on the, on the star, on the, every star, there's a word. Um, there were a couple of blank ones, but I don't think I put any of those out, but you, if you find one, that's, that's fine. You can put your own word there. These star words have been prayed over and created with such love and care in faith that God will bring together the right word for the right person. In a few moments, the stars will align and we will invite you to come forward and choose your star. It'll be right after the sermon. Um, to choose your star without knowing exactly where it will lead. May you be surprised by extraordinary things as the special star word leads you to exactly where you need to be. When extraordinary things happen in the sky, we stop and notice. We look for comets and shooting stars and full moons. We watch for rocket launches and satellites drifting in space and the space station circling our orbit. The Magi were paying close attention to the sky when they saw something different, a star that shone so brightly that they were compelled to follow it. Just as the Christmas star once shined for all people to see, the light of Christ still shines for all people. May we use these star words as, a remind, as reminders of the Christmas star that we invite into our lives so that we may be led toward Jesus the Christ. And also, I will remind you that uh, we've been, our, our magi have been traveling on the windowsills and getting a little closer but they've made it to the manger scene, to the stable. And um, so I enjoy, and we have a lot, we have the, nobody wanted to be Magi today. I, you know, uh, we were hoping for some kids to be here this morning that might be willing to do it, but they stayed up too late last night. So they're not here. <laughs> and uh, um, so uh, imagine, that we have the gifts processing and they are on the altar. So, now, we are seekers just like the Magi. Light our paths and lead us closer to you. We look for hope, peace, joy, love, and all that Christ brings. Light our paths and lead us closer to you. We long for the abundant life God promises. Light our paths. May your word guide your intentions in the days to come. May we pay attention to where God is present. May God use these words to show us how to live and love in the world.
arise in body or spirit. Arise, shine, for the light has come. Light Lift up your eyes and look around. See how light shines here in your sons and daughters. Light reflects the glory of God. Look around. Our hearts thrill and rejoice. God is here again. The wise ones were led by a special star. They kept following the star and wondering where it would lead them. We know that it eventually led them to the Christ child. It was the light of the star. Like the wise ones on this Epiphany Sunday, we come looking for light. Let us pray. Holy mystery, you twinkle and shimmer like the stars in the heavens above. It feels like anything could happen. We pause here with you, O mystery, to contemplate the stars and to wonder what brought us here to this moment, this time, this place. Guide us with words that would give us meaning. Show us how your love light reflects the truth of who we hope to be. There is so much possibility. Orient us with your radiance. Amen. Trusting the goodness and loving kindness of God, let us confess our sins. Epiphanies alter our path. New understanding shifts our directions. But too often we think that nothing extraordinary ever happens. Forgive us. Too often we fail to notice your revelation. Forgive us. Too often we miss the amazing ways you have become manifest. Forgive us. Too often we ignore the guiding lights you have sent to intercede. Forgive us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The extraordinary wonder is that God loves us. God sends another beacon and then another until it stops and it becomes an epiphany that we need. God's grace and love is without end. Amen. be seated. The Old Testament reading is from Isaiah, the 60th chapter, beginning at the first verse. Isaiah challenges us to see how we are reflections of God's light and shares that light with others. We can practice this in our worship before we go out in service to the world. Unite the young and old to consider why we might choose angels or stars to adorn our Christmas trees. Invite them to listen how Isaiah talks about the light and what it might mean for us today. Arise, shine, for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall come over the earth and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from afar away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice, because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nation shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall, shall cover you, the young camels of Midian and Ephah, all those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. The reading of the psalm is from Psalm 72. 
a vision of life restored, it's pro proclaimed in this morning psalm. Here the writer declares that there will be justice for poor and oppressed people. There will be liberation and care for, for people on the margins, and the monarch will, re will reign with justice. Hope for the people. Give the king your justice, O God, and your righteousness to a king's son. May he judge your people with righteousness and your poor with justice. May the mountains yield prosperity for the people and the hills in righteousness. May he defend the cause of the poor for the people, give deliverance to the needy, and crush the oppressor. May he live while the sun endures and as long as the moon throughout all generations. May he be like rain that falls on the moon grass, like showers of water in the earth. In his days may righteousness flourish and peace abound until the moon is no more. May the kings of Carlos and the isles render him tribute. May the kings of Sheba and Seba bring favor you. May all kings fall down before him. All nations give him service. For he, For he delivers, delivers the needy when they fall, and the poor those who have, have no help. Have no help. <laughs> he has pity on the weak and the needy, and saves the lives of the needy. From oppression and violence, he redeems their life, and precious is in their blood in his sight. Reading of the Apostle of the Epistle is from Ephesians, the third chapter. We might not remember our dreams or question every authority, so it might help to hear Paul's wisdom to the Gentiles in Ephesians 3. His message is simple, be open to mystery. We might think, he know, we, might think we know a lot of things. We might hope for even more, but God reveals new mysteries all the time. We only have to be open to new epiphanies, <coughs> What is God's revealing right now? How do you embrace mystery in your everyday life? This is the reason that I, Paul, am a prisoner for Christ Jesus, for the sake of you Gentiles. For surely you have already heard of the commission of God's grace that was given me for you, and how the mystery was made known to me by revelation, as I wrote above it in a few words a reading of which will enable you to perceive my understanding of the mystery of Christ. In former generations, this mystery was not made known to humankind, as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. That is, the Gentiles have become f fellow heirs, members of the same body, and sharers in the promise of Christ Jesus through the gospel. Of this gospel, of this gospel, I have become a servant according to the gift of God's grace that was given me by the working of his power. Although I am the very least of all the saints, this grace was given to me to bring to the Gentiles the news of the boundless riches of Christ and to make everyone see what is the plan of the mystery hidden for ages in God who created all things so that through the church of the wisdom of God in its rich variety might now be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. This was in accordance with the eternal purpose that he has carried out in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have access and boldness and confidence through faith in him. Thanks be to God. Thank you so much, Cynthia. It is not clear in Matthew 2 who are the wise ones. They may have been kings or astronomers. While some biblical translations note that they are magi, um, in Greek, magi actually means Zoroastrian priests or followers of the Zoroastrian religion. Nor it is, is it clear how many people came or their gender but we can be reasonably certain that they came from a different country, have access to wealth because of the expensive gifts, 
and travel to honor and pay respect to Jesus. Listen to the gospel of Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, a magi from the east came to Jerusalem. Magi from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is this child who was born king of the Jews? For we observed his star in the east, and we have come to pay homage to him. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. And they told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for it has been written by the prophet, and you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. And from you shall come a ruler who is shepherd to my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the Magi, and learned from them the exact time that the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for this child. And when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. And when they had heard the king, they set out. And there ahead of them went the star that they had seen in the east until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. This is the good news. Praise to you, Lord. Let's be in the spirit of prayer. O star-flinging God, whose light dances across eternity, dazzle us into your presence this new year. Open our hearts to the mystery of your love. Awaken us to your presence, knit to the ordinary. Reveal to us what is possible but not yet present. Heal us that we might be healers. Reconcile us to you and to ourselves, that our living might be reconciling. Stop us often, we pray, with news that is good, with hope that holds, with truth that transforms with a word tailored to this trail we're on. May the word of your grace guide our steps like the sun by day and the north star by night as we travel into the gift of a new year. Amen. Um, we have no children this morning, so I'm going to skip the children's sermon and move right on. <clears throat> so, again, let's be in the spirit of prayer. We praise you, Holy One, for visions of your loving ways. Stir our hope and fill us with the courage to imagine how we might journey in the paths you illuminate with the brilliance of the Christ child. Amen. Long before telescopes and computers, people named stars and named the stars and charted their long journeys through the heavens. These early star stargazers noticed patterns and consistency in their movements. Perhaps we can imagine that they felt the stars were a part of a greater story and that the stars had the power to influence events on Earth. Early books of the Bible testify to the power of stars in the life of ancient people. Job mentions a couple of constellations, the bear, Orion, and childless Abram goes out at night and hears a promise from God that he will be, have as many children as, the, as numerous as the stars. 
Stars are said to sing together and to shout for joy. In the book of Job and in Psalm 147, God tells us the names of all the stars and God, that God determines their number. Clearly the stars held meaning for the ancient people just as they hold meaning for us. In our gospel reading today, we see wise men coming from the east following a star. It's not clear to a modern reader how they knew that this rising star announced the birth of the king of the Jews, as the connection between the rising star and the birth of a king is shrouded in mystery. What's even more strange, perhaps, is how everyone in the story, especially Herod, just rolls along with it, accepting the wise men's account of the star and the birth of the king. In fact, King Herod takes the wise men's astronomical report so seriously that he drops everything to search for and to attempt to eliminate the baby. There are dozens of theories on where the wise men originated and how they knew so much about stars. The Greek word in Matthew's gospel is magi, a group of learned scholars who advised kings by interpreting dreams and astrology. While much about the wise men is unclear, what is clear is that these men are not Judeans, but Gentiles. They're bearing witness to a cosmic event of astronomical proportions, the birth of a small baby boy. And though nobody seems to know exactly where that baby is, we can imagine their shock when they discover that Herod is clueless about where the baby, the new king, was located. I imagine that they thought surely King Herod would, known, would know if a king had been born in his kingdom. It is in this detail that we can see how foreign these wise men truly are. They're seemingly naive and unaware of the dangerous politics in Judea, unaware of how different this new king will be from all other kings. They are simply looking for the king that the star announced. They follow that star until it, fall, until it stops over the place where Jesus was. It's so simple. While it may seem mysterious and strange to us to follow a star that way, it is not strange for them. It's simply how they understood the world. It's simply how they found Jesus. The Feast of the Epiphany commemorates the manifestation of Jesus to the peoples of the earth. The vision John sees in his revelation contains all the diversity of the human species. And there was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages standing before the throne and before the lamb robed in white with palm branches in their hands. They are all worshiping Jesus, celebrating the new life that they have found in him. And like the wise men who watched the star stop over Jesus, they were overwhelmed with joy. The people in John's vision are overwhelmed with joy and know that they are in the presence of God. Today, we are a community of people from many different backgrounds and places gathered in the presence of Jesus. This in itself is a miracle. This means that there is hope for a better world. This means good news that Jesus died and rose again is a story for everyone, no matter how far they've come to find him. So today we rejoice that the wise men followed that star and found a baby, a baby named Jesus. And we rejoice today because we found him too. This morning, we have a chance to become star seekers. Throughout the sanctuary are stars with words written on them. Try praying that you'll find the star word that God wants you to have 
Sorry, I didn't put any up in the, uh, I'm so sorry, I didn't put any, any, in, any in the balcony, guys. You'll have to come downstairs. Um, now, finding a word doesn't mean that it's necessarily the word you think you want, but it might be the word that God would like you to have. So David will be playing some music for just a short time, and there's the basket up here, there's some on the piano, some on the windowsills, but take a few moments and prayerfully locate your star word.
together. Let us state that which we believe using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. With wonder and thanksgiving for Christ's coming into the world, we pray for the church, the life of the earth, and the whole human family. Merciful God, broaden the church's hospitality and welcome. Open our hearts to any in need of refuge and help, especially those who are persecuted. Prosper the work of the Lutheran Immigration and Refugee Services. God of grace. Hear us with prayer. Abiding God, accompany this community in the coming year. Increase our love for one another and the neighbors we serve. Enrich our worship and deepen our faith. Sustain Pastor Candy and all who minister in your name, God of grace. Life-giving God, restore the health of the soil, the seas, and the air. Increase the joy and praise of all living things. In the coming year, strengthen local, national, and international efforts to prevent further harm to the environment, God of grace. Hear our prayer. Liberating God, deliver your people from cruel oppression, increase justice in every nation and the, in every nation, and keep the dream of freedom alive. In this new year, bring the blessing of peace and put an end to violent conflict throughout the world. God of grace, hear our prayer. Uplifting God, raise all who are bowed down by trouble and need. We especially remember those on our prayer list. And we pray for individuals and families living in poverty, protect and nurture all children, sustain those who parent, teach, and care for the young. God of grace, hear our prayer. Loving God, the holy innocents who perish in every generation are safe in your keeping. We give you thanks and praise for all the faithful who have gone before us into everlasting life with you. God of grace, hear our prayer. Pondering the mystery of eternal love made flesh in Christ Jesus, we commend all for whom we pray to the mercy of God. Amen. We see God in the ordinary places of our lives, sometimes without realizing it. We see God with us when we hold a hand or offer a smile, when we feed a stranger. God is with us when we offer the first fruits of our, fruits of our labors, as God's people have done for generations, let us give God the fruits of our labors as an act of worship and gratitude.
Let us pray. Bless these gifts, O God, and bless our hands in the work of your realm of peace, love, and justice. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. Come to the table of peace. People of Advent, the Lord be with you. People of Christmas, lift up your hearts. We lift our hearts, O Lord, grace to the one who was born for us. People of the star, offer your songs of joy and thanksgiving to God. We will sing our praises to the one who has revealed glory and hope in the babe of Bethlehem. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places Give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels and the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. God, you alone are holy, you alone are God. The universe declares your praise beyond the stars, beneath the sea, within each cell, with every breath. We praise you, O God. Generations bless your faithfulness through the water by day and night, across the wilderness, out of exile, into the future. We bless you, O God. We give you thanks for your dear son at the heart of human life, near to those who suffer beside the sinner among the poor with us now. We thank you, O God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body, broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me, remembering his love for us on the way, at the table, and to the end, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ came, the morning star of love. Christ died, the night star of salvation. Christ was raised, the radiant star of resurrection. Christ will come again, the constellation of hope. We pray for the gift of your spirit in our gathering within this meal among your people throughout the world. Blessing, praise, and thanks to you, holy God, through Christ Jesus, by your spirit in your church without end. Amen. And hear us now as we pray the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Through the broken bread, we participate in the body of Christ. Through the cup of blessing, we participate in the new life Christ gives. The
the gifts of God for the people of God. Come, for all things are ready. As we prepare ourselves to receive this holy sacrament, we remember that we are part of a living body of Christ in the whole world. We come to this table with different needs and we come in different ways. The bread represents our brokenness. So I ask you to partake when you are ready. When you eat of this bread, remember, this is the body of Christ broken for you and for me. Let the people say amen. amen. Likewise, as we participate in this, the cup of blessing, we acknowledge our unity in Christ Jesus. So please hold your cup, and we will all partake as one. My friends, drink this, for it is the blood of Christ shed for you and for me. Let the people say amen. amen. May the body and blood of Jesus the Christ strengthen and preserve you, each one, unto everlasting life. Amen. God, our Redeemer, you have fed us at this table with gifts of grace, truth, and life. As you have gathered us in joy, send us forth as messengers of your peace. Make us shine with the good news of your glory, born to us in Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. And now may God, may the God of surprises bless you, and may the spirit of new pathways hold you, now and always. Amen. Amen. Christ the Savior is born. Go in peace. Proclaim his good news. Thanks be to God. God.